All right, if you have your Bible with you, we're going to be at Exodus chapter 33 today. We're going to be starting our reading at verse 12. We're going to talk about uh, some things in the life of Moses. And it says in verse 12, chapter 33, And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou hast said unto me, Bring up this people that thou hast not let me know whom they, they will, whom they will send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people and he said my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest and he said unto him if thy, pre if thy presence go not with me carry us not up hence for wherein shall it be no uh, known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight is it not that thou had thou goest with us? So shall we be uh, separated, I, I and thy people, for all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my, my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the, the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall be no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt uh, stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while the glo my glory passeth by, and I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass. And I will take my hand, and thou shalt see my back part, but my face shall not be seen. Let us pray. You most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Father, I just pray you just be with us today in this service. Just uh, pray you just uh, touch hearts, Father, and just get them ready to receive your word, Father. And Lord, just be with me and just give me the word to speak that I might glorify you in each and everything I do and each and everything I say. And pray for this church, uh, leaders of our country. Lord, we <coughs> pray that they seek your will in each and everything they do. Pray for all our soldiers. Pray for all the sick, the ones on our prayer list. Lord, we have so many in our church that are sick. And Lord, I just lift them all up to you right now, Father, and pray your will be done in each and every situation. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Has God ever called you to do a job that seemed too difficult? I tell you, God will call you to do jobs that seem so difficult that you can't possibly do them. But in doing that, God will always be with you and God will always equip you with every single thing you need to serve Him. And see, the purpose of that is, is to grow us in our Christian life. See, God wants us to grow us to a place where we're close to Him. And when we have that closeness, we can truly know how to worship Him. And that's what I want to talk to you today about, about worship. Uh, you know, the thing is, Moses was called to one of those very difficult jobs. See, Moses had the job assignment of, of bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt. He was bringing them on the Exodus. He was to bring them into the promise, across a desert, into the, the promised land. But as you know, if you've been here on Wednesday nights, you know that God's people, and it says it in the, verse, uh, the chapter before this, God's people were some stiff-necked people. They were stubborn. They were always getting in trouble. They were always complaining. They're, they were always sinning against God and getting away from God. Could, could you imagine the task that lay before Moses 
bringing these people into the promised land. It was a very difficult task. But the thing is, God was going to be with him all the way. See, there was no way possible for Moses to be able to do this without having a close relationship with God. And I tell you, when we have that close relationship with God, we can do all things. See, Christ is working through us. You know, in chapter 33, we see Moses had just received the law. Uh, he went up on the mountain there for, for 40 days and 40 nights. And God gave him the Ten Commandments. And he, as he was there, the children of Israel, they were down there in the camps and they got to wonder, is Moses coming back? Uh, uh, he is he dead? We don't know what happened to Moses. And as they always do, they got out of the will of God. What they had done, they got all gathered their gold and, and ornaments up and they, they melted it and they took and they, they made it into a golden calf. And when Moses came down from the mountain, they had had this golden calf and they had begun to worship this golden calf. And not only that, they were performing all kind of immoral sins in, uh, there. And the thing is, we know when, when Moses came down and he seen what they were doing, uh, he had to take a man with him and he threw them to the ground and, and broke them because he knew that God was angry with Israel because they had sinned against God. They had broken uh, God's law. And the, the thing is, they had took up idolatry. And because of this, in the early verses... God told Moses, because of this, I'm not going with y'all into the land of Canaan. I'm not going into the promised land with y'all. I'll let you go before me. I'll send angels before you to fight, but I'm not going. I'm not taking my presence into the promised land with you. But we see that, that in telling this, Moses talked to God. And Moses pleaded with God. And uh, Moses even told God, he said... If you're not going with us into the promised land, I'm not going either. That's pretty much what he told God. And you know, a lot of times people say, well, how can he make a demand of God like that? He's not making a demand. What he's saying is, hey, God, I'm your servant. I'm following you. If you ain't going, I ain't going. That's what he's telling. He's not making a demand. We have no right to make demands of God. But the thing is, uh, as we see in these scriptures here, as these events occur, it put Moses in a position where he was discouraged. You ever been in a position where you've been discouraged? God had called you to do something or, or perform a something and the thing is, it's not going exactly like you want to and then you get discouraged. It's, it's a place, man, it's a bad place to be. But that's where Moses was at. And Moses needs something to encourage him, something to lift him up, something to, to get him back to where he needs to be in order to, to do what God wants him to do. And we see Moses asked for something in Scripture here that we read about. He asked God to see his glory. I mean, could you imagine? Man, that was bold. Of, that was bold of Moses. Hey, God, I want to see your glory. And the thing is, we know that, that God did. He, he showed him his glory from what we uh, read in Scripture. But, you know, the, the thing is, God gave him what he needed to encourage him and to draw him closer to God. And Moses, I tell you, whenever you draw closer to God, it brings you to a place of worship. See, the thing is, if we ever going to worship God like we need to worship Him, we got to have that closeness with God. See, the thing is, when we have sin in between us and God, we can't worship God like He wants us to do. I tell you, if we was to remove all the sin out of our life and repent of all our sins and get to where God wanted us to be and have that closeness with God, I tell you, God would move on this church, uh, His Spirit would come in, and, and we would have a service like we never had before. We would have true revival in our churches. We would understand what true worship is. But I tell you today, I think a lot of people don't truly understand what worship is. They just come to church and they go through the motions and they, they, they listen to the preacher and they go back out in their, in, into the world, their, their life, and they live it. But they don't know what true worship is. But I tell you, when you see God for who He is, it will truly put you into a mode of worship for Him. And today I want to see, I want you to see in Scripture what Moses seen. First of all, I want you to see Moses' request. I want you to see, uh, also I want you to see God's response. And I want you to see the results of all this. 
First of all, we see Moses' request. You know, Moses had this duty that he was called to. It wasn't something that Moses chose to do. Moses didn't say, God, I, 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 I'm just going to go and get your people and bring them out. No, he was chosen by God to do this. Right. You know, the thing is, he was, he was off minding his own business at his brother, I mean, his father in law's uh, uh, hurting his sheep. He was out in the middle of nowhere on the back 40 there to go to speak. And the thing is, we know that, that God called to Moses from a burning bush. God chose Moses to do this thing and, and to do this task. And in order for Moses to be able to do this, Moses had to walk in obedience to what God wanted him to do. But not only do we see that, that uh, his duty, but we also see that Moses was discouraged. Like I told you before, Every single time that he tried to, to lead the children of Israel to where God wanted them to be, they bellyate, they complain, they sin against God. Could you imagine this? Even when Moses would give orders, they wouldn't even pay attention to his orders. They wouldn't follow his orders. They were doing everything but what God wanted them to do. Could you imagine that that would lead you to a place of discouragement? discouragement. You know, I can only imagine how Moses felt. You know, I've never been called to anything close to what Moses was called to do. But I tell you, I've been to a point in my Christian life where I'm trying to do something for God and nobody wants to help and, or nobody uh, is interested in it and it just gets so discouraging sometimes. But I tell you, the thing is, when we get to that point, we need to draw close to God. And that's what Moses was trying to do here. He was trying to draw close to God. How do we know? Because we see his desire. See, Moses had a desire uh, that to know God more, to experience more of God. That's what he, he was doing when he asked this. See, he knew that was the only thing that could encourage him and get him out of that place of discouragement. See, the thing is, when we draw close to God, see, the thing is, what He does, He ministers us spiritually. Amen. He picks us up. He gets us ready for the task that we need to face. You know, the thing, I think there's four ways that Moses wanted to know God more. First of all, he said in verse 33, 13, he said, I want to, your, His ways is what He said. I want to know your ways, God. What is He saying? Well, He wants to know God better and have a better understanding of God. Why is that important for us as Christians to have a better understanding of God? Because if we're ever going to serve God like He wants us to do, if we're ever going to be able to please God, we've got to understand God's ways and what He wants from us. That's why I think there's so many Christians out there that are wayward because they don't know what God expects. They don't know God's ways. And it's here in the book. God's book, the Word of God, tells us God's ways and we need to get in there and we need to study God's Word and learn God's ways. And that's what Moses knew. M Moses knew that if he could just learn more about God, he would be able to do the things that God wanted him to do. But not only that, but he also wanted to know the person of God. See, he wanted to un better understand who God was. You know why? Because he knew if he knew who God was, it would lead him to a, a deeper fellowship with God. I tell you, if as far as you, the closest you ever get to, uh, in a relationship with God is salvation, you're missing out on a lot of things. See, a lot of people get saved and as far as they ever grow, as far as their relationship with God ever per, uh, progresses. But the thing is, God wants to grow us each and every day of a Christian life. It, it starts with salvation, but it don't end there. God is continuously trying to grow us in a Christian life to have a closer walk with Him because where He can use us to do the things that He needs us to do. And that's what He was doing here with Moses. Uh, Moses wanted a closer walk with Him because He knew He could serve Him better. But not only that, but He wanted His presence. See, Moses wanted a clear manifestation of God in the presence of Israel and in His presence for what Moses is saying. I want leadership, God. I want You to lead us. I want to see You working. I want to see You moving in the midst of Your people. And God, uh, Moses knew what this looked like. Because if you remember when they built the tabernacle, when they was coming out of, uh, excuse me, when they was coming out of the Exodus, God went before them. God was leading His children in the daytime by cloud, at night by a pillar of fire. So they knew what the Spirit of God looked like. They knew what the presence of God looked like. They knew what it meant to be led by God. 
But Moses is saying, I want to know that better. I want to feel your presence better. And that's what we ought to have a desire in our Christian life, to, to see the presence of God more. But not only that, we see that he, he said he wanted to see God's glory. You know, Moses wanted to, to come into a deeper relationship with God. You know, Moses was compelled to, he wanted a, a deeper and a, a better revelation of who God was. That's what we all should desire as Christians. We ought to desire to know God better. If you don't have a desire to, to know God more and more each day, I'll tell you, you're not who you need to be as a Christian. Because that's what God expects. Of. Look at what Paul said in Philippians 3.10. He said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering being made conformable unto His death if by any means I might obtain unto the resurrection of death. See, Paul had a desire to know God more. See all the things that Paul went through in his Christian life. It wasn't an easy time either. Paul spent a lot of time in prison. He was beaten multiple times. He was even stoned and left for dead. But I tell you, in doing all that, God, he drew closer to God and he had a desire to know God more. See, I tell you, when you face hard times in your Christian life, it ought to draw us to God and make us want to know God more and more in our Christian life. That should be the desire of every single Christian out there. You know, why did Moses have this desire to know God more? Because of his walk. See, Moses had the Bible because he had a close walk with God. And I tell you, when you spend time with God, walking with God in your Christian life, it's going to give you the desire to know Him more and more. We all need to stay in that phase when we first got saved. You remember when you first got saved? How, man, you was just on fire for God and you, you was in, you, in the Word of God studying. You couldn't learn enough about the Word of God. You were constantly reading and studying. Why? Because you wanted to know who God was. You wanted to have a closer relationship, a closer walk with Him. And see, that's what Moses desired. And that was because of the close walk that he had with Him. You know, I think there are a few things, a few reasons that Moses had a heart for worship. First of all, because Moses had been chosen. Like I told you before, God chose him to do what he wanted him to do. Now I tell you, as Christians, we've all been chosen by God too. He chose every single one of us to be saved. You say, well, there's our son out there that he chooses not to be saved. No, the Bible says he wants all to be saved. But see, the second part of that is in order for us to do what God wants, we have to accept it. We have, see, if Moses, if he hadn't accepted what God had called him to do, he wouldn't have done it. But see, the thing is, we have to accept salvation like that. When God uh, pricks our heart, when He convicts us of our, of our sins, well, we need to repent and to come to Him and receive Him as Lord and Savior. See, God chose us, but we have to act on that. We have to be willing to accept Him in faith. But not only that, but we also see that Moses had been converted. You know, Moses actually experienced the, the Passover in Egypt. You know, when he wanted to, to bring God's children out of Egypt, the thing is, uh, the, the last plague there, he killed the firstborn of, uh, of all the Egyptians. But in order for God's people to be saved, they were supposed to take a, a lamb and they were supposed to offer it as a sacrifice and they were supposed to take that blood and they were supposed to, to rub it over the doorpost. And that night when the, when the death angel come, when he seen that blood covering the doorpost, uh, he would pass over. See, that's a picture of our salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. We were washed in the blood of Christ. See, Moses knew about being washed in the blood. He had experienced that in, there in Egypt. And he learned that through that, that God was as good as His Word. And the thing is, we need to understand God is as good as His Word. So how, we, how do we come to that point? First of all, like Moses did, he communed with God. You know, the, the Bible tells us that he walked with the Lord. He had a close relationship that distinguished him from everybody in his time. He had a close walk with God. He was different from everybody out there during his time. And I tell you, we ought to be like that. We ought to have such a walk with God that, that we're different, or that people can tell that we've been with Jesus. We ought to have that kind of walk. But not only do we see his request, but we also see God's response. In God's response, He makes a promise. 
He tells Moses, he said, you know what? I'm going to grant what you ask. You ask to see my glory, I'm going to grant that to you. Why did God do this? Well, I think if you look at verse 17, it says Moses had found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See, the thing is, Moses didn't do anything to earn this. It was God's grace that allowed him to do this. It's just like anything that we receive from the Lord. All the blessings that we see, receive from God, we don't earn those. A lot of people think, well, I earned that, I did this and I did that. No. We can never earn God's grace and God's mercy. But you know what? We serve a God that freely gives His grace and His mercy. And the thing is, that's what the reason He was able to see God's glory. Because of God's grace and God's mercy. God is a sovereign God and He's in control of all things at all times. And He made a decision to let Moses. You know a lot of people say, man, I don't understand all that's going on in these verses here. Well, I tell you, I don't either. It's a lot of things in the Bible that we're not going to understand until we stand before Him in glory. But I know because of His grace and His mercy, He allowed Him to... He told him, He said, you can't, see, you can't see my face. No man can see God's face and live. Because God is almighty. God is pure. God is sinless perfection. And if he comes, we come in His presence in this sinless form, we'll die. That's what the Bible teaches us. But I tell you, one day we're going to be able to come in His presence because we're going to get that new body. Uh, we're going to get that glorified body that just like Jesus had. And we're going to be able to come in His presence and stand in His presence. It's going to be a, a great day. But you know, the, the thing is, every single thing that we receive from the Lord is by His grace. But not only did He tell Moses that, but He also mentioned a place to Moses. He said there's a place, there's a cliff and a rock down here and I want you to I want you to go down here and I want you to to stand in the in the cliff of this rock and, and when I when I pass by this rock he said I, I'm gonna let you let you see my glory. And you know the, the thing is when he passed by Jesus uh, God covered him with his hand and he protected him uh, and then he let him see his glory as he as he passed by. You know, I tell you, there's a place today that, that we can still uh, have that rock, and that place is in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, that's the only place we'll ever see God's glory is here on earth is in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and all that He does for us in our Christian life. You know, the, the song that we have in our, in our hymnal, Rock of Ages, the guy that actually wrote that song, he said he was out in the, in the wilderness, out there in the outdoors, he said, in the middle of nowhere, he said, and all of a sudden, a storm come up. It was a bad storm. And he knew of a place, this rock, that had a cliff in it like that. And he ran to that place and he, he got up in there. He said, when he got up in there, it all fell loose, man. He said it was the awfulest storm he'd ever seen. It was a torrential downfall. It just poured and lightning and thunder striking and everything, trees breaking. And the thing is, you know what? He was safe in that rock. And then he, he wrote that song. Because it's a picture of who we are when we stand in Christ knowing Him as our Lord and Savior. But he also said he wanted God to manifest. God said, God said He was going to manifest His presence with Moses. In verse 5 it says, The Lord stood with him there. In verse 6 it said, The Lord passed by. Like I told you, as he was in that rock, God allowed him as he passed by, God protected with his hand and let him see his glory. You know, the thing is, until we get to this point where we truly see who God is, we'll never be able to worship him like he wants us to worship him. You know, the thing is, I've been in services where God really moved. And then I've been in services where people jumped around and hollered and, and did all the things that you, you thought that it was real moving to God, but it wasn't. Uh, because all these things go on, just because one or two of these things like preaching uh, and, and, and shouting and singing and, and all these things go on in the church, it don't mean that we truly, truly worship in God. We need to get to a place where we can truly worship Him. But we see the response, but now I want you to see the results. You know, the thing is, after that mountaintop experience that, that Moses had, after he seen God's glory, you know, he was never the same again. He was never the same. You know, the Bible tells us when he came down, 
I let his face blow. See, everybody knew that he had been Jesus. They knew he had been with God. See, that's the way it ought to be in our life. People ought to be able to see the presence of God by the way we live and the way we act and the things we do. We, it, I tell you, when you come to, to know God, it ought to make a difference in your life. You're not the same old person. The Bible tells us we are made new creatures in Christ. We're not the same old people that we used to be. We don't do the same old things that we used to do. There ought to be a difference. There's change that comes into your life. And I tell you, if you say you've accepted Christ and there's never been a change in your life, I have a problem with that. Because I tell you, the, the Lord that I serve, he, when you come to know Him, He changes you. Uh, just like Moses here. Moses was never the same after he seen the glory of God. We need to be like that. But not only that, but it also produced humility. You know, the thing is, we ought to be some of the most humblest people on earth as Christians. Why? It's because we serve an awesome God that does everything for us. When you stand in God's presence, you see how great He is, it ought to humble you. That's what happened to Moses. The Bible said when he seen God's glory, you know what he did? He fell down on his face there and he worshipped. He worshipped. It humbled him. See, I tell you, we see God for who He truly is. There's a other side of that. It shows us who we truly are. We see who we truly are. And we see our need for the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we see ourselves like this, the last thing it produces, it produces worship. You know, the thing is, when He fell down there, He truly worshipped the God. He worshipped God like He had never worshipped Him before as He seen God's glory. I tell you, that's what God wants to produce in every one of our lives. And if we want to get to that point, we need to put away all the sin in our life. We need to get to where God wants us to be. We need to repent and get back to God, that close walk, that close fellowship with Him. And until we do, I tell you, God's not going to move like that. God's not going to move like that. All we got to do is call on Him and get back to where He wants us to be. And I say this to you today in closing. You know, in order to, to worship, truly worship God, first of all, you've got you to gotta know Him. You, you have to have a personal relationship. See, you know, the thing is, a lot of people just, just come to church and they never have a relationship with God. And the thing is, you can't worship God outside of a relationship with Him. See, the first step in worshiping Him is knowing Him as Lord and Savior. If you've never done that today, I want to give you an opportunity as your song letter and prayer and prayer come uh, to accept Him today as your Lord and Savior. But maybe you're here and, uh, today and, and you're a Christian and you see for your life not what it needs to be. Uh, you're not truly worshiping God like you should worship Him. Uh, that could be handled today too. If you'll come, if we stand. Page 182.